name is uh, Radosław Ganczarek, but you can call me Rad. It's much simpler and more available for English speakers. Uh, this is not my first EuroPython, and this is not my first talk on EuroPython, because I was uh, here, and by here I don't mean uh, Basil, in Bilbao on EuroPython uh, 2015. And uh, my main title of, the, of, of my talk was pretty much the same. Uh, but now the subtitle is different, the reasonable approach. So uh, what happened? Uh, why you reason reasonable? Because uh, over time uh, your view on, on things change. And uh, I wanted to share you a couple of uh, thoughts I have after a couple of years of uh, fighting for a better quality of uh, Python software. Uh, so, this talk will be mainly about tools. Uh, tools that we use to uh, check the quality or fix uh, things, formatting. And uh, it will be mainly about Python 3. And uh, the tools that are most, most up-to-date now, uh, that, has, that are, are f fresh enough to be safe to use. Uh, and it will be only about code quality checking because uh, Python, in, there, there are lots of tools in, Py in Python uh, for other things like for checking for SQL uh, injection, for checking uh, the uh, spelling in your code. So I, I will just focus on co code quality and a bit, a li just a little bit about testing. Uh, I'll, I, what I want to talk about is uh, IDE-specific and from the framework-specific tools be because there are very many of them, so they, they deserve their own uh, talks. Uh, okay, so let's start with meeting my friends. Uh, unfortunately, they won't join me on the stage because they are imaginary. Uh, first of them is the Hobgoblin. You know the... Uh, the quote that, uh, the, about the hobgoblins of little minds and stuff. So uh, let's, let's uh, sum up the, this, uh, this approach. Uh, so what does it mean to be a, be a hobgoblin? And do you, are you a hobgoblin? Or are we? Uh, or, I, it, or am I a hobgoblin? So, Hobgoblin is narrow-minded, so he doesn't care about what happens everything, uh, everywhere else, except his own piece of code, his beautiful module that he's working on. And from that reason also, he lacks business perspective. He doesn't, mean about, he doesn't think about business. He thinks about making his code most beautiful and most according to the standards as he can. And third thing is that Hobgoblins are extreme. Yes? Ah, okay. Okay, no problem. Okay. How do you... Yeah, okay. That's good. <laughs> thanks, thanks. So let's, let's talk about Hobgoblins more. Uh, so, and uh, Hobgoblins are extreme. They either want to follow all the rules or none of the rules, uh, because only this makes sense for a hobgoblin. Also, which is a result of all of that, all of that hobgoblins value rules the most. So project, shipping the uh, valuable uh, version of the project valuable for client is not important for them. OK, so let's meet another friend. Meet Timmy. Timmy is average Python developer. You probably all, all, all you know Timmy if you worked in a, in a Python project. Timmy is very skilled. He's, he uh, has some experience a couple of years. And he has his own style of coding Python, uh, which might be in some ways unorthodox. And, and Timmy, some people say Timmy is mean and, and they, they don't like Timmy, but the truth is that Timmy is afraid of changes. And uh, that's why 
he doesn't like uh, if you come and say, oh, we're going to measure the quality of our code. Uh, okay, so the third friend, Zen of Python. Probably you all know this, uh, but I won't uh, talk much about it because we are going to talk about it in, the de in detail. So for Hobgoblin, Zen of Python is like set of absolute rules. And uh, Hobgoblin also tends to uh, justify his choices by twisting a bit uh, the uh, Zen of Python uh, guidelines. He said, oh, okay, but the code should be readable, so we won't use these features from Python 3, because nobody knows Python 3. And on the other hand, Timmy is like, oh, it's like pirate code, guidelines, more guidelines than rules. Uh, it's, we, we, are, we need to embrace the spirit of Zen of Python, not follow the actual rules. Uh, yes. Uh, so both of them in, are in some way wrong. Uh, okay, so let's, let's start with the first one uh, about uh, beautiful is better than ugly. What does it mean? It can mean lots of things, <laughs> in fact. But uh, there is something in our, you know, uh, in our mind, there's, there's some, our mind does a couple of tricks. For example, beautiful people seem to be more honest, more good. And the same is with code. If you look on a code and it looks beautiful, it's ha it has lots of, lots of space, uh, beautiful line breaks, and it's well, well divided. It, you have a feeling that it's, it's well written. <laughs> it's not always true, but, but, but it's, it's good to have a good first impression. And uh, to, go, to have a good first impression, we can use formatters. Uh, formatters that will format our code for us. Uh, they are, they, they, there are two main players I uh, identified. So first is black. So if you know, you know this quote by Henry Ford, that uh, your car can be any color you want except it is black. And that's how black works. Uh, it has pre-picked formatting rules, uh, no configuration at all. And yes, it will format your, your code according to the, to the rules that black has. On the other hand, you have YAPF, uh, written by Google, and YAPF, YAPF is very configurable, you can change many things, but the drawback of this uh, solution is that uh, if you uh, gather your people, gather your fellow developers and say, okay, let's sit and write configuration file for YAP and pick the, pick the rules, you're going to spend a month on it, <laughs> and maybe even more. Uh, so black is a good, as, as a default, but YAP, YAP is a good choice if you want to really uh, uh, Pick, pick the right rules for your, for your uh, system. And yes, so the Hobgoblin approach here is to just enable everything. Enable everything and let, let the guys be uh, shocked by what, what happened. On the other hand, there is Timmy. Timmy is developing Python for like five years. He has his own formatting style and, and he, he really can't he thinks he can't read any other code. But if we have five Timmy's and each of them has different style, it might be at, our code might change it to, change it to chaos, which everybody is, uh, uh, everybody is a little shifting to his, own, uh, to his own preferences. So using a formatter is a, is a good choice. Uh, a formatter we all agreed on, of course. Uh, yes, so let's talk about typing. <laughs> uh, I, I, won't, I won't tell you if uh, uh, types in Python 3 are good or bad. You probably have already your own, own opinion about it. But uh, if you are using uh, types, it's good to check them with MyPy or Pyre. Uh, they are the tools that are, are more or less the same, but uh, uh, you, you, you need to check, uh, check the details to know which one you want. Pyre aims to be more uh, 
uh, to, to be faster and more thorough, but now it's, uh, it's, still, uh, it's still developing. And yes, and let's, let's, um, let's talk about the simple things or complex things. For ex let's say you have a project when you have very specific needs for, uh, for static, static analysis. You have lots of regular expressions and you, want, and you have a specific style of regular expression that you use and you want it to be followed. So one solution is to write your own static analysis tool, which can take some time. On the other hand, you can use belly button. Uh, in belly button, you, can, you just write your own rules uh, using the uh, AST expressions. So it's, it's relatively faster than writing your own, your own tool uh, and can be, uh, and, it, and adding additional rules. If, if you, once you learn how to add them, how to write the rules definition, adding additional rules would be even faster. Uh, so as you can see, Hobgoblin doesn't like this tool at all because Hobgoblin likes to just check all the rules uh, turn on all, all, all the rules and then sit and watch how the world burns. And belly button just makes you to uh, ask yourself, what, what do I want to check? What I want to, uh, what I want to, be, to be checked in my software? Okay, so let's talk about PyLint. Who uses PyLint? Wow, okay, so that might be not, not, not a slide for you exactly, but I know people who just hate PyLint or more exactly are afraid of PyLint. Is, is anybody here who, who is afraid of PyLint? Okay, see, so people who are afraid of PyLint, I, 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 don't, I don't mean you because I don't know you, uh, but, but people who are afraid of PyLint tend to say, oh, it's enough to just take Flake 8 and uh, download 50 plugins, and it's almost like PyLint. It's not like PyLint, it's almost like PyLint. It's not PyLint. So uh, I know why PyLint might, uh, might be scary, because it has many rules, it has many things, and uh, the most important thing is that if a formatting tool uh, shows you a, val shows you a val uh, violation, you can fix it just in like five seconds. You need to add a new line, add spaces, but PyLint sometimes can give you a, can show you a violation that makes you refactor all your code, or maybe a whole, whole module. Uh, and that's, that's a bit painful about PyLint. After, uh, however, if you follow it from the start of your project, it's much, it, it's much simpler following it. Uh, I will tell later about how to deal with, with old project and, and new tools. Uh, yes, and, for, and Timmy will say that, well, what are, what are the, the, these rules for? It's, they're just good practices, every developer follows them. But also every developer is a human and humans make mistakes. Uh, even, even now, I, for example, it's maybe much much simpler uh, topic. But uh, do you ever do, do you ever make pep eight mistakes? Yes, yes, we do it. We, we do it. Even even if we work ten years in Python, we are still doing these mistakes. Maybe less often than in the beginning. But it's it's not something that you can just learn, and it's all good after it. You need you need to check. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about big, big tools. Uh, there are many, there are many of them, or maybe not so many, but they are big. So first of them is uh, Prospector. Uh, Prospector is a very nice tool. It's in the uh, uh, GitHub organization uh, with, the, uh, with all the cool uh, Python st uh, code analysis tools. And also there is another one, there is uh, We Make Python Style Guide, which uses mostly the Flake 8, uh, which is a, 
which is a custom configuration with all Flake 8 plugins. And there is also PyLama uh, and Flake 8. I think everybody uses Flake 8. I don't, but I, it, it, it's very common. Uh, I have a problem with big tools. And you can see it. You can see this problem here. Let's let's say I wanted to use Bandit and PyLint. I don't have it. I might use Prospector and then use Bandit. But what's the in, in that case? What 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 do I win for using Prospector? Maybe uh, a, a couple of a couple of configuration files less. But uh, yes. But the uh, but the big tools. Uh, they are they are good for checking things fast. For if you have a you are doing an audit or you are you you have something some old project you want to quickly check things, uh, but they 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 can use outdated tools. Uh, here tools that are not bolded, they are outdated. Uh, they 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 didn't have any any new version in the last half a year. So yeah, you mu you, you must think about it. If you want to use it, uh, also I tried to use both of these big tools uh, just after installing it, and <laughs> they didn't work. <laughs> uh, maybe Prospector worked, but uh, Prospector couldn't run Pylint for some for some reason. So um, big tools make big may make may have big errors, uh, and if you if you have if you have a sm set of smaller tools, you can uh, deal with errors individually. Uh, also, you don't have any choice of what what tools do you, will you have in your project if you use just the w one big. In fact, you choose what 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 they choose for you. And uh, one configuration file. Okay, it's, it it might be not a it might be not a bad thing. After all, we use setup CFG for all the configuration. Uh, and yes, yeah, so for, for, for Timmy, one big tool is a good choice because his, it's just one tool, it's, it checks, it's over. But in real, we want to, we, we, usually you want to pick your, your tools and have uh, only those that you need. Uh, for example, if you don't want, if you don't have doc strings, what, why, why do you need PyDoc style? Uh, okay, and let's let's say we have a big project and we have enabled all the we have enab uh, installed a couple of tools for analyzing code, and uh, we have code coverage, uh, code coverage tool enabled, and uh, so what do we do to? To, to, to don't be flooded with uh, with all the violations, uh, there is a tool called diff cover, which also has a binary called diff quality, that checks uh, that uh, checks the uh, violations or coverage only on the lines that you modified. Of course, there might be a problem with it because if you modify the line and made an error somewhere else, it, they they it won't catch it. But it's good enough for a quick check, and. Uh, also, in, in general, in test, in, in measuring test coverage, there is a trap that you don't. Uh, that the, the, the coverage, in fact, tells you uh, what code is bad, not what code is good. Uh, like, if you have 85% of code covered in uh, in unit tests, it means that 15% is there's there, they might be something wrong, and in 15%, and 85% might be good. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's talk about readability. Python has a tool called Vulture, which is, which is very, uh, it, it can't be used uh, very, very often, uh, because Vulture looks for unused stuff in Python code. And if you code in Python like for more than one day, you know probably that uh, in Python there are many situations when you mm, just change change the way how the how the stuff is used you make a dictionary of functions or call a method via get at through function so sometimes it's not visible that something is used uh, so vulture is giving lots of false positives but after all if you if you filter them if you somehow look look into them 
uh, you can you can track the the, the really unused uh, unused pieces of code. So be uh, be careful with vultures. Okay, so what about special cases? Uh, Hobgoblin will likely say that, oh, we have special cases, you are not good enough. Uh, <laughs> we all know that, is, that it's not true because Python projects have many shapes and many topics. Uh, so there, there, there are various crazy things that happen in, in Python code. Uh, and uh, if you are using tools for checking the quality, there are many features that can help you. Uh, you can, in, in, in PyLint, for example, you can uh, use uh, regular expressions for, for file discovery or even line, uh, ignoring lines. Uh, you can, in, instead, of, instead of letting PyLint or, or PyCode style uh, discover the Python files, you can prepare with a bash, uh, with a bash comment a list of files that really needs to be checked. And also, in each that case, when uh, someone tells that, oh, it's a special case, I try to think, is it this case really special? <laughs> because uh, it's easy to say, oh, it's a special case. Let's disable everything here. It must, be, it must stay how it is. So don't, uh, going the easy way is not always the good. Uh, yeah, so there is a tool I've, I found, uh, Pydiatra. And uh, I thought it was a it was a clone of Pylint or something like this, but not. It is just a tool with some custom uh, static analysis checks, uh, which is might might noting uh, there are some checks about uh, uh, about regular expressions. So I, I don't uh, I don't uh, um, I can't recommend this tool blindly, but you can uh, you need to check if if the checks that uh, that Pydiatra has. Uh, have something that uh, is really useful for your project, because if yes, you might waste some waste some time trying to trying to check it or write your own checks. Uh, okay, so what about what about checking code automatically in your code? Uh, if you have a CI, you can use talks for uh, configuring all the all the checks. So really, you don't. If you are using multiple tools, as I recommended, you are you are not uh, you don't need to uh, run them independently. You have talks, you have bash. You can write a command that can run it, and uh, in the CI, if you have a Jenkins or a GitLab CI or anything else, it's uh, it's really useful that the uh, code code cover, co code checking goes before the tests. Because uh, because if, if anything fails, you will be we will have a fast uh, answer. Uh, okay, this is about the same as the as the previous about special cases because uh, we we really like just the disable disabling rules uh, if anything is go if anything goes wrong, especially if, it, if it's Friday f f 3 p.m. and we want to go home. Uh, there is also an automatic tool for uh, for, for setting types, but it, it can be used for for old projects that don't have types, but not for in in day to day work. So, as uh, to to sum up, if you are going to use tools in your project, pick Bandit or Doji, uh, no, no Doji, <laughs> uh, pick MyPy, Pyre or PyType. PyCode style is a is a minimum. Uh, PyDoc style, if you are using uh, doc strings. Uh, PyFlakes or PyLint, iSort and Black for formatting. Uh, here's a slide with uh, Spanish Inquisition. And okay, if you have ex an existing project and you want to start, you can use tools like AutoPep8 or AutoFlake to automatically fix uh, issues, but the, the fixes need to be overseen by, by a human. Uh, I sort for, for sorting imports PyCode style, PyLint. PyCode style and PyLint, it's a bare minimum for me. Uh, yeah, but the, the most important thing is that you should talk to your team uh, because, because the, uh, it, is, it is very, very important so that every, everybody accepts the changes you are going to, the, accepts the tool you are going to introduce because uh, it might require some additional effort. Uh, okay, I can skip this one. Uh, but the advantages are very 
are very good. You can reach more readability, maintainability, enhanced refactoring, and uh, you, it may need some additional time and it, it might produce false positives, but the, for me, advantage, advantages over, overcome the disadvantages. Uh, if you're looking for good tools for Python, visit PyCQA uh, and uh, or awesome static analysis uh, links. Uh, and uh, after all, after all, if you want to introduce uh, by, by introducing tools for, for uh, analysis of code in Python, analysis of good practices, you want to inspire people and lead them to better implementation of code and not to be a bully. That's all. Thank you, Radoslav. Uh, if you have questions, you can raise your hand and I will go to you with a microphone or you can go to the microphone stands. Okay, so, hi, great talk. And uh, do you have any suggestions for third party, like for your re requirements, like to check that code, something mm -hmm. like NPN audit or for, uh, for Node.js for, for Python? For, no, for Node.js? No, 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 for Python, to check your requirements for third Our party. requirements, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, for example, there is, uh, I only know there's an online tool uh, call, uh, available for open source project called PyApp. They are checking the requirements and freezing them in the, in the requirements txt file. Uh, I, I found a tool for checking the requirements, but it was very outdated. So, uh, but I, I think that they, the, there might be something I missed. So uh, I encourage you to look by yourself. Okay, thank you.